Um, this is a great revision tool if you haven't done the paper yet or if you have done the paper. Uh, if you haven't done the paper, please do pause the video before each question, have a go at them and then walk through it with me. Uh, if you've already done the, the paper and you're looking to just make sure you've got everything right and you want to understand some bits and pieces, uh, that's also perfect. Please see the timestamps below. Um, I'll do it question by question. Uh, so it's really easy for you guys to navigate. Um, so let's just get straight into it. So here we've got uh, a to the uh, seven times by a to the four. So uh, that will, uh, we need to add the powers here. So the, the rule is we add the powers, uh, which is obviously a to the 11. Uh, so when we're dividing with powers, we've got to subtract the powers. So that is going to give us w to the 12. Uh, so here we've got uh, 8x to the 5, y cubed, all squared. So what this actually means is 8x to the 5, y cubed, times by 8x to the 5, y cubed. 8 times 8 is 64. x to the 5 times x to the 5 is x to the 10. Y cubed times y cubed is y to the six, and this is our answer. Okay, making t the subject, so we're trying to get t by itself here. So we're going to add the eight v to both sides. So that is c plus eight v equals t cubed. Now the opposite of cubed is cube root, so I'm going to cube root both sides. And that is going to give me just T on its own. And that is our answer. Okay, so just scrolling up so everyone can see. Um, moving on to the next question. Question number two. Daniil, Gabrielle and Hadley share some money in the ratios 3, 5, 9. So straight away, that's Daniil, that's Gabrielle and that's Hadley. Uh, the difference between the amount of money that Gabrielle receives and the amount of money that Hadley receives is 196 euros. Work out the amount of money that Daniil receives. Okay, so the difference between Gabrielle, uh, which is five parts, okay, so this is Gabrielle, uh, and the amount of money that Hadley receives, which is nine parts, Okay, that's Hadley, uh, is 196 euros. So between these two things is four parts. Okay, and what they're saying is that that is 196 euros. Okay, so using, using your calculator now, 196 divided by four. Okay, so that means one part is equal to uh, 49 euros. Okay, now they want the amount that Daniil receives. Now, Daniil is three parts. So three parts is 49 times three. So we're times in by three here. So we've got our times by three here. Uh, so times by three is uh, 147 euros. And that is the amount Daniil receives, 147 euros. Okay, so moving on to question three. The diagram shows triangle ABC. Uh, work out the length of the side AB. Uh, give your answer to correct to three significant figures. Okay, so AB is the one we're trying to find, so let's just call that X. Uh, so this is a Sokotoa question. So -ka toa Okay, because we've got an angle aside and it's a right angle triangle. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is label our triangle. So the angle given is 65 degrees. So opposite that is the opposite. Opposite the right angle is always the longest side. That is the hypotenuse. And the one next to the angle given is the adjacent. But I'm not concerned about the adjacent because I don't want it and I don't have it. Uh, so now we've got the opposite and the hypotenuse. So which of so, ka, and toa has the opposite and uh, hypotenuse? Well, it, it, it's the so. So sine x equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Now, uh, let me actually just correct that because it's not actually x. 
it's uh, theta, which is just the angle. Okay, so it's just Greek letter, just represents the angle. So substituting everything we know, so we've got sine 64 equals the opposite is x, and the hypotenuse is 8.4. So rearranging this equation, going to times both sides by 8.4. So sine 64, make sure you close that bracket on the calculator, times by 8.4 equals x. So x gives us, so sine 64 times by 8.4, and that gives us 7.549869, and it goes on. Okay, they want it to three significant figures. So rounded, so I've got to round up. And that would be to three significant figures. So 7.55. Great. Moving on to question four. Okay. Sarah makes and sells mugs. One day she makes 150 mugs. Her total cost for making these mugs is £1,140. Of these mugs, two-fifths are small mugs, 32% are medium mugs, and the rest are large mugs. Here is Sarah's price list for selling each mug. Sarah sells all 150 mugs. Work out her percentage profit. Give your answer to the nearest whole number. Okay, so there's a lot to unpick here. Um, ultimately, we need to find out how many are small mugs, how many are medium mugs, and how many are large mugs, and then times them by the prices. Okay, so first things first. So we need to find two-fifths of 150 and that's small okay so small is equal to that typing that in the calculator uh, is 60 okay so that's 60 60 mugs 60 mugs okay so 32 percent of them are medium so medium is going to be 32% um, of 150, so 1%, just over here, 1% is going to be uh, 1.5, timesing that by 32, that's 48 mugs, and then the rest are large mugs, so 150 minus the rest of these. So doing 150 minus 60 minus 48, that's 42 mugs. So let's work out how much she earns from each one. So we're doing 60 times 8.5, 48 times 11.2, and 42 times by 14.2. Okay, and that's going to give us the total amount of money she makes okay so typing these in the calculator 510 okay and let's add all these up to work out her total amount of money Okay, so that's how much money she makes. Uh, now it says up here her total cost was 1,140. So how do I work out percentage profit? Well, you need to find out the difference. So you subtract them from each other. So that's 504 pound, and you divide it uh, by the amount she spends. Okay, uh, so the amount she spends is that times by 100. Okay, so divided by that, times by 100. Okay, so the answer is 44.210 percent. So it said to the nearest whole number, so 44 percent profit, percentage profit. Okay, that's great, that's a nice five mark question. So you get plenty of marks for 
working out the small, medium, large, then working out how much that earns her, and then uh, actually working out percentage profit. Okay, moving on to question five. Jenny has six cards. Each card has a whole number written on it, so that the smallest number is five, the largest number is 24, the median number of the six numbers is 14, the mode of the six numbers is eight. Okay. Jenny arranged her cards so they are in uh, order of size. Uh, for the remaining four cards, write each dotted line number that could be on the card. So th there's a couple of different options here. Um, so first of all, there's an even number of cards, six cards. So that means the median is going to be the average of these two cards. Okay. Now, because the mode is uh, eight, um, that means we're going to need a double eight in there. Um, now, we don't have m uh, many other options here. So if that's an eight and I want the median uh, to be 14, uh, that means I've got a, so eight is six away from 14, so I've got to be six on the other side. So that's 20. Um, so then it can, in this last one, it can be any number other than, so any number between 20 and 24, not inclusive. So it could be 21, 22, 23, uh, and that's it. Um, so any of those three numbers in there would get you um, all the marks. So then going on to part B, a basketball team plays six games. After playing five games, uh, the team has a mean score of 21 points per game. After six games, uh, the team has a mean score of 23 points per game. Work out the points scored uh, in the sixth game. Okay, so if the mean is uh, 21 points per game after five games, that means they scored a total of five times 21, uh, which is um, 105. Okay, and if the mean was six, uh, was if the mean was 23 points after six games, uh, then the total number of points would be 138. Uh, so then the difference, obviously, in the sixth game is uh, the subtraction of those, uh, which would be 33 points. Okay, so then moving on. Okay, solve the inequality 5x minus 7 is less than or equal to 2. Okay, so what we do here is treat it exactly the same as an equation. Uh, we've got to do the same to both sides. We've got a plus 7 to both sides, that gives me 5x is less than or equal to 9. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So x is less than or equal to 9 over 5. Uh, if you wanted to, you could write that as a decimal. You would get the marks either way. Uh, so you could write it as 1.8 as well. Okay, factorizing, uh, this is a quadratic, so we're looking for the factor pairs of 35, negative 35, that add to negative 2. So 1 and 35, uh, and then it's going to be 5 and 7. But these two, these pairs don't actually times to negative 35, so one of the numbers, one of the pairs, has to be negative. So I actually need to write these pairs out again. Um and then alternate which one's negatives. Now that adds to 34, that adds to two, that adds to negative 34, that adds to negative two. So that is the pair that I want. So it is y plus five, y minus seven. Okay, so let me actually just adjust where these are, because really the net I should have put the negative in front of it um, so here is our answer so y plus 5 y minus 7 uh, it doesn't matter which way round these two brackets are so you could write it like this as well it's exactly the same thing so now it says hence solve uh, this quadratic that we've just factorized so it makes sense to write it in factorized form 
that's why the word hence is there. Okay, so we've got two brackets multiplied together here. So if I've got two numbers uh, multiplied together that equal zero, either of the brackets has to equal zero. So it can either be y plus five equals zero or y minus seven equals zero. So then that would be y equals seven or y equals minus five. So those are our two answers and we do get two answers uh, like so. Okay, moving on to question number seven. Okay, so this is sets and Venn diagrams. Okay, so just some notation. This uh, means the universal set, and those are kind of the numbers we're picking from. So these are the only numbers that exist uh, in this question, 4 to 15. Okay, so A, uh, set A, and uh, int, so this is A intersect B. Uh, so that basically means what's in both. Okay, so this is the middle of the Venn diagram. Um, so that straight away can go into our uh, Venn diagram, it is the middle. Uh, now this uh, with the little dash, B dash, or the complement of B, uh, is uh, not B. So this is, so these numbers are the numbers that aren't in B. Um, so that includes all of this area here. Okay, um, I will rub this out in a second. And this is obviously not A, and I'll just change the color here. So the area for not A is actually everything outside of A, like so. Okay, so now the the bits that um, overlap, we want we want to see what um, is in both of these sets, not B and not A, and that will form the uh, outside of the Venn diagram, the bit that was cross shaded there. So numbers that are in both. Uh, both uh, sets here so oh sorry going back let's scroll back down um, so 7 is in both 8 is in both and 14 is in both so those numbers are going to go on the outside just once and then the rest is going to go in the opposite letter so not B so the rest of these numbers here are going to go in the A crescent as it is called and the rest of not A is going to go in the B crescent so this is our completed uh, Venn diagram um, I hope that makes sense that's that's quite a tricky question because they've used uh, the complement of A and B there rather than just A and B itself um, but that's really testing your understanding of the complement uh, and, the, and just the general notation for sets Okay, uh, so we've got a standard form question here, question 8. So they want us to do 4.2 times 10 to the minus, let's go back, uh, minus 24 times by 3 times 10 to the 145. Now I can tell you for free straight away, I'm not even going to bother using my calculator because these numbers are, are just too big. So you could straight, normally you could type this straight into a calculator and it would work it out for you but the 145 just makes it too big. So what we actually need to do here is do it ourselves. So we need so we need to do three times 4.2 as a separate thing. Uh, and then we need to do 10 to the minus 24 times by 10 to 145. Um, so three times 4.2 uh, is 12.6. And then this is similar to question one, where we can add the powers here. So 145 minus 24, so times 10 to the 121. Now, this isn't in standard form because this number at the front here needs to be between one and 10. So what I'm actually gonna do is 1.26 because I've just shifted it. Now, the question is, is it 122 or 120? Now, I'm, I've actually made this number smaller uh, so I need to make the number in the power slightly bigger. Um, that's the way I like to think about it. Uh, you could talk about shifting uh, the place value, um, but I just think if I've made this number at the front smaller, then I need to make the power bigger. Um, 
Moving on to question nine. Okay, so calculate the area of triangle ABC. Um, now, this is a four mark question. Um, now, it's an isosceles triangle, which is actually interesting because we, we could go about doing the cosine rule, trying to find an angle, but because it's isosceles, I can actually split this knowing that that's a right angle and I've split this into 14 and 14. Um, if you if it wasn't isosceles, then we would have to do the cosine rule and then half A, B, sine C. Um, but actually, there's no need to do that. So what we can do is simply just so half, excuse me. So it's the um, formula for the area of a triangle is uh, a half times base times height. Um, so that will give me one side. Uh, so now that's the area. So the area of just one side is a half times 17.5 times 14. Now, actually, we don't need to do that half because I, I need both sides of the triangle anyway. Um, so if I actually put this in, so this gives me 1, 2, 2.5. Now that just gives me one side, but they're both 122.5. So, timesing by two, the total area, total area is uh, 245. And what's the unit? Centimeters squared. So the key in this question is is realizing that it's isosceles. If these two values weren't the same, I couldn't split it down the middle like this uh, because we can't just assume that, that we, this is going to be 90 degrees at the bottom here unless it's an isosceles triangle, which it is. Okay, moving on to question 10. Okay, so uh, straight line question. So we need to get it in the form y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient or the steepness of the line and C is the y-intercept. So the way we do that is we've got to rearrange this to get y equals. So I'm going to minus 7x from both sides, which is going to give us 2y equals 10 minus 7x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, which is 5 minus 7 over 2x. Okay, And I'm actually just going to rewrite this so it's in the form y equals mx plus c. Okay, so here the gradient is the number in front of x, so the gradient is minus 7 over 2. Okay, don't write an x here because that would be wrong, that's not the gradient. Uh, the gradient is the number in front of x. Uh, and then part b, thankfully we've actually already done it, where it crosses the y-axis, so that's actually the y-intercept. So the answer here is 0, 5 as a coordinate, because if we think about this line, um, if it's going to cross at 5, I'm not going to think about it too much. If it's crossing at 5, what's the coordinate of that point? Well, it, it, it's 0, 5. It's got an x coordinate of 0. Uh, great. Moving on to question number 11. So, 200,000 yen uh, for three years in a savings account paying compound interest. Great. So, the rate of interest is 1.8% for the first year and x% percent for the second year and third year. The value of the investment at the end of the third year is uh, 209,754 yen. Work out the value of x. Okay, so let's work out the value of the investment after one year. So I'm going to write 1.8% as an increase uh, as a multiply. Okay, um, so I want to write uh, it as a multiplier, which is actually 1.018. I'll tell you where I, where I get that number from here. So what you do is you do 1 plus, plus if you're increasing, which we are here, uh, it would be subtract if it was depreciation or decrease. And then you do the interest rate, which is 1.8, divided by 100. Okay. So if we do that, so then it's 1 uh, over 1.8 over 100, which is 1.018. So this is just called the multiplier. Um, it's how we increase uh, by percent uh, quickly and uh, 
fairly pain free. Okay, so that gives us 203,600 yen. Okay, so then now we we we've got this number that we don't know. Um so let's actually just call this uh let's not call it x because it won't actually be x. Let's just call it r squared. Uh and then that's going to equal uh, 209754. Um, so the reason it's squared is because it's two years. So once I've done it for one year, you get the 203,600. But then I'm going to increase that by a percentage of um, R, uh, which is what we're trying to do, trying to find out. So here I'm going to divide um, by 203,600. Uh, so if I do that, I get 754 over 203,600, uh, and I get 1.0302259, dot, dot, dot. Going to square root both sides, okay, and it does say give it to one decimal place. So I get 1.0150046. Okay. Now, this is not the interest rate here. This is the multiplier. Okay? So, this is the multiplier. So, actually, I need to subtract 1. Let me not do it there because it doesn't make sense there. So, I need to do 1.01. If you can just spot what it is here, then that's great. Um, if not, you subtract 1 and then times by 100. Okay? Times by 100. So, I'm basically doing the opposite of this. Um which is great, uh, so minus 1 times by 100, so the interest rate to one decimal place is 1.5, 1 1.5000459, dot, 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 dot. okay, so that as an interest rate uh, would be 1.5%. Moving on to question 12, cumulative frequency question, okay, so straight away, that's going to um, mildly help us here. So the table gives information about the time in minutes taken by 80 customers to do their shopping in a supermarket. So seven people took between 0 and 10 minutes. 26 people took between 10 and 20 minutes. 24 people took between 20 and 30 minutes. 14 people took between 30 and 40 minutes. Seven people took between 40 and 50 two people took between 50 and 60 minutes. Okay, so cumulative frequency is kind of like a running total, okay? So if you look here, these are all zero, whereas before, they were not, okay? So that's really important. So it's, it's like a running total. So if we do the cumulative frequency here, uh, so how many people took between zero and 10 minutes? Well, we already know that from the first table, it's seven. Okay, but now we've got to add on for the next one the number of people took between 10 and 20 minutes. So we've got to add on 26. So 7 plus 26 is 33. Okay, and now we've got to add on the, the people that took between 20 and 30 minutes. So we've got to add on 24. So we're getting these numbers. I hope it makes sense where these numbers are coming from. I'm just adding the next number down. So now I need to add on 14, 71. Then I'm going to add 7, 78, then I'm going to add 2, which is 80. Now, this is always a nice uh, check. So it says 80 customers, and our running total adds up to 80, which is great, because it, me it means we've done it right, uh, at least hopefully. So now it says, using the grid opposite, draw the cumulative frequency uh, graph of your table. So now straight away, I'm going to tell you it looks like this, okay? roughly okay it looks like an s the number of times i see stuff like this uh or bars stuff like this okay it's, it's not like this it's this one it's this one okay so now what we're doing is we're plotting the end points and the cumulative frequency okay and then zero zero okay so we're going to plot zero zero first So plotting zero, zero. Okay, so then 10 and seven. So I'm gonna plot 10 minutes and seven. So that goes there. We're gonna plot 20 and 33. 
So 20 and 33 is there. 30 and 57. 30 and 57 is there. 40 and 71 is there. 50 and 78 is there. And 60 and 80 is there. Great. Okay, so um, making a nice smooth curve. I'm going to have to pause in the middle. And then we're not aiming for dot to dot here. And on paper, it's much easier like so. Okay. Now, with these questions, there's always a degree of inaccuracy. Uh, so when they're asking for the cumulative frequency or the median or whatever they're asking for, uh, there'll always be a tolerance level because uh, your graph will rarely be perfectly exact. Okay, so now they want us to use the graph uh, to find the an estimate for the median. And going back to it being inaccurate, that's why it's an estimate here and not an exact median. Okay, so if there are 80 customers, think of it as a list. You've got 1 to 80. Your median is going to be around the 40th customer. Okay, so the 40th customer is here. Uh, I'm actually just going to get the ruler out here, rotate it. And then you draw a line across from 40 to your graph. And then you get your ruler like so. And then you draw a line down to see how long it takes. Um, so happy with that. Uh, let's try and get rid of the ruler now. Okay, so then we read off this number. And that is the median number of minutes, which I read it as 24. Okay, so that's how you do that. And if it asks for the interquartile range, uh, which is not doing here, but if it were, then you would split the top and the bottom into the medians again, and you would um, subtract the upper quartile from the lower quartile. Similar sort of method. Um, okay, so part D. One of the 80 customers is chosen at random. Use your graph to find an estimate for the probability of t uh, for the probability that that the time taken by this customer was more than 42 minutes. Okay, so first of all, probability is successful outcomes divided by total outcomes. Um, the total number of outcomes here are 80 because we're, we're choosing out of 80 people. So now we just need to find the number of people that took more than 42 minutes. Um, so again, I'm going to get the ruler out and I'm going to put it on 42. And then I'm going to draw up to the graph. I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm going to draw across. OK, and then I'm going to get rid of the ruler. OK, so now this number here is approximately 73. So we'll go with 73. Um, but 73 people didn't have more than 42 minutes. 73 people had less than 42 minutes. So actually, only 7 people had more than 42 minutes. Um, where did I get 7 from? 80 minus 73. So the remaining 7 people uh, had um, took more than 42 minutes. And this is our answer. Moving on to question 13. Okay, expanding triple brackets. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I would probably expand the first two parts first. This is actually um, a slightly easier one than if you had uh, three brackets with two terms each. Uh, so I'm going to expand 5x and then 2 plus x in brackets first. So I'm doing 5 times x and then 5 times 2. So 5 times x is 5x squared. And then 5x times 2 is 10x. I'm then going to multiply that by 3x minus 4. Okay, so far, and this is where you're going to do your FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. So the first is 5x squared times 3x which is 15x cubed, and then you're going to do your outer, so that is 
5x squared minus, uh, times by minus 4, which is minus 20x squared. Your inner, which is 30x squared. And then your last, so 10x times by minus 4 is minus 40x. Okay, and now you've just got to simplify everything, collect like terms. So I can, there's only one lot of um, x cubes. I can simplify the minus 20x squared and the plus, 20, uh, plus 30x squared. So that would be 10x squared and then minus 40x. Okay, and that would be our answer. Going on to B, this is an indices question. Um, so the first things first, um, I'm actually going to get rid of this minus here. Uh, and the way you do that is uh, by just flipping the fraction inside the bracket. So actually this is equal to y to the power of 20 over 16 w to the 8. And then rather to the power of negative 3 over 4, it's just to the power of 3 over 4. Um, so that's just learning your indice laws, if you're not sure why I've done that. Uh, and now I've just got to multiply the powers by uh, 3 over 4. So this is equal to, now 20 times by 3 over 4 is um, 15. And then I'm going to leave the number out for now. And then 8 times 3 over 4 is 6. So those are my powers. I then also need to do 16 to the power of 3 over 4, which if you type in your calculator is um, a nice number, I believe. And you get 8. Okay, And, th and that's your final answer. So uh, y to the 15 over 8w to the power of 6. Okay, question 14, a probability uh, tree question. Uh, Annika has two packets of seeds, packet A and packet B. There are 12 seeds in packet A. Seven of these are sunflower seeds. Uh, there are 15 seeds in packet B. Eight of these are sunflower seeds. Uh, Annika is going to take a random seed from packet A and a seed from packet B. Uh, complete the tree diagram. Okay, so I like to think of these in like columns. We've got two columns here. Okay, so we've got packet A and packet B. Um, now, the columns uh, need to add to one. So, and we can do it by uh, simply doing the one minus seven over 12. Uh, so what? how many non sunflower seeds are there in packet A? Well, the answer is uh, five. Uh, so the probability of getting a non-sunflower one is five over 12. That's for packet A. Now for packet B, uh, there are eight sunflower seeds. So it's gonna be uh, eight over 15 because there are eight sunflower seeds and 15 in total. So how many non-sunflower seeds are there? Well, it's 15 minus eight, so that's seven. So that's 7 over 15. And these are the same because uh, they're different packets and the probabilities uh, would be the same. Let me just make that 15 a little bit clearer. And that's also 7 over 15. Okay, so now calculating the probability uh, that Annika will take two sunflower seeds. Okay, so I'm looking for a root here at the start. So that's the root I'm looking at. Now you multiply along here. So what I'm actually, all I have to do is 7 over 12 times by 8 over 15. And then you would type in the calculator. 7 over 12 times by 8 over 15. And that would give you 14 over 45. Okay, and that's the probability of two sunflower seeds. Okay, question 15. A is inversely proportional to C squared. So the first line of your working would be A is proportional uh, to the inverse of C squared. 
Now, all that means is there is a constant times these things, so let's call that k, such that they are equal. Now, they've given us some information here um, about uh, to help us find k. So when a is 40, and I don't know k yet, c is 1.5. So now we just need to solve for k, so that's 40 times 1.5 squared. So k is equal to, just typing it in my calculator, is equal to 90. Okay, so then going, and then I would substitute that back into there. So then my formula, and they often do ask you for a formula, my formula would be 90 over c squared. A equals 90 over c squared. Now, what they want us to do is find c when a is 1,000. So, a is 1,000. And now I need to solve this equation for c. So, I'm going to times both sides by c squared. So, that's 1,000 c squared equals 90. I'm going to divide by 1,000. and then square root. Typing that in our calculator, um, you would get 0 0.3. Okay, so we're getting to the stage of the paper now where we're really targeting the grade nine questions. Um, so, they are going to get a bit harder. If you're not aiming for a grade 9, maybe you're aiming for a grade 8. Picking up any sort of marks here um, will really make a difference in helping you get a grade. So even if you feel like you're nowhere near this level, I'm sure you know something about circles, for example. That that might get you a mark. Um, but let, let's, let's have a go at this question. So A, B, C are points on the circle so that the length... Uh, of the arc ABC is five centimeters. Okay, um, given that angle AOC is equal to 55 degrees, work out the area of the circle. Okay, so just a plan of attack here. We're going to use uh, the the arc length to find the radius by going by reverse engineering it, going backwards. And once we have the radius, we can then work out the area using pi r squared. Um, so the formula, if you don't know, to find the arc length is, well, you do the circumference, which is pi, well, 2 pi r, and then you times it by the angle, which is 55, but let's call it theta, over 360. Now 360s come from the angles around a point, so it's basically the fraction of the circle that you're working out. So in this case, we're working out the fraction 55 over 360. So 2 times pi r times by 55 over 360, and we're told in the question that that is 5 centimeters. And now we can solve this for r. So I would personally do 5 and then just type it all in my calculator. Let's not mess about 2 pi times 55 over 360. And that's going to equal R. So typing that in the calculator exactly as I've written it there uh, is going to give you the answer of... 5.208707 dot, 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 dot. We don't want to round too early because otherwise we might get a rounding error at the end. So now that we've got our radius, uh, we can work out the area and that is pi r squared. So area is equal to pi times 5.208707. Dot, 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 squared. Okay, so the area, and I've just kept that kept that number in my calculator, uh, and then I'm going to times it by pi after squaring it, uh, which gives me 85.23339 dot 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 dot, uh, and it asks for one decimal place, which is 85.2 centimeters squared. Okay, question 17. 
A and B are two similar phases. That means they are enlargements of each other. They are exactly the same shape, uh, but they are enlargement of each other. So vase A is height 10 centimeters. Vase B is height 15 centimeters. The difference between the volume of vase A and the volume of vase B is 1,197 centimeters cubed. Calculate the volume of vase A. A. Okay, so first of all we need to find the length scale factor and we do that by dividing the heights so that gives us 1.5. Now that's the length scale factor and that's in one dimension because lengths are one dimension. The volume scale factor is the cube of the length scale factor because it's in three dimensions so 1.5 cubed which if you type into your calculator is 27 over 8 and I would recommend leaving it as a fraction uh, you don't have to, it's up to you, it's whatever you're more comfortable with now this is actually a really interesting question because it says the difference between the volumes is 1197 um, so let's just set that up so vase B is the bigger one so let's say the volume of vase B minus the volume of vase A is 1197 now if I times vase A the volume of vase A so the volume of vase A times by this volume scale factor that would give me the volume of vase B okay so now I can actually substitute this into into this top equation here so I can get 27 over 8 uh, the volume of vase A minus the volume of vase A equals 1197 okay and then you can factorize out volume of vase A which would give you 27 over 8 minus 1 equals 1197 and then you're going to divide by that number so the volume of uh, vase A is 1197 divided by 27 over 8 minus 1 which is 504 centimeters cubed 504 okay okay so we've got a bounds question here question 18 so a equals w minus x squared over y uh, and they want us to find the lower bound of a so if I want a lower bound, okay, um, now I need to decide here whether I want the lower bound of w, the lower bound of x, the lower bound of y, or the upper bound of, of each of them. Now they don't all have to be the same, so I could choose the lower bound for w and the upper bound for x for example, but I need to think I want to make this as small as possible because I want the lower bound of a. Now I'm going to want uh, the smaller number for W so I want the lower bound uh, for W because that that's just in general gonna make a smaller then I want to subtract the biggest possible thing to make a even smaller so I need to make this fraction as big as possible so to make a fraction as big as possible um, you want a really small number on the bottom and a really big number on the top so I want the upper bound of x squared and I want the lower bound of y because if I divide by a smaller number then I'm going to get a bigger number um, you can always use your intuition a little bit with these questions but now I just need to find these things okay so the lower bound of a is what I'm trying to find so lower bound of w well, that's equal to 3.45, which is the rounded answer. And then it says correct two decimal places. So I'm going to subtract because it's lower bound. And the second decimal place, the place value, is 0 0.01. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. It's always divided by 2. So that's going to give me 3.445. I'm just going to check that's right. I don't want to make any mistakes minus 0 0.01 over 2 
which is 3.445. Okay, so that's the lower bound of W. Now I want the upper bound of X. So I'm going to do 1.9. So this is X upper bound. 1.9 plus because it's the upper bound. Now it's correct to one decimal place. So the first decimal place place value is 0 0.1. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. And that is equal to, if you type that in your calculator, 1.95. Now, some people can just spot these lower bounds. And if you can, that's great. If you can't, you can do it this way. Now, I want the lower bound of y. So the lower bound of y is 5. And it's correct to the nearest whole number. Now, the nearest whole number is 1. So the nearest 1. So it's 1 over 2. Sorry, it's going to be minus, not plus. Because it's a lower bound. So it's going to be 5 minus a half, which is 4.5. So y lower bound is that. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight some things here. So these are all the numbers I've just worked out, which I'm going to use here in this equation that I've set up. So a lower bound is equal to 3.445, which is the lower bound of w, minus uh, 1.95 squared which is the upper bound of x uh, and then divided by 4.5 which is the lower bound of y and then I'm just going to type that in the calculator and that will give me hopefully the lower bound of a so type in that in your calculator and you get 2.6 Okay, so the lower bound of A is 2.6. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay, nonlinear simultaneous equations. Um, these are going to get messy. And your basic algebra in terms of expanding brackets and substitution really needs to be on point here. So this bottom equation is Y equals... So wherever I see y in this top equation, instead of writing y, I'm going to write 2x minus 3. Okay, that, that's the game plan. So I'm rewriting this top equation, and instead of y, I'm going to write 2x minus 3. I'm substituting y into that equation. Instead of y, I'm writing 2x minus 3. Okay. And that's what you get when you do that. Um, now I'm going to expand everything, and I'm going to get a quadratic that I need to solve. Okay, so 3x squared at the front. Now I can expand these brackets, especially when it's a squared, in my head because I've done it lots of times. But if you need to do uh, a little bit of working out on the side, that is by all means okay using your FOIL technique. So you're going to get 4x squared. Uh, minus 6x, minus 6x, uh, plus 9, which is obviously 4x squared, minus 12x, plus 9. Okay, so this bracket here is 4x squared, minus 12x, plus 9. Okay, now expanding this last bracket, so minus x times 2x is minus 2x squared, minus x times negative 3 is positive 3x and that equals 5. I'm now going to collect all the like terms and take everything over to one side. So 3x squared plus 4x squared minus 2x squared is 5x squared. So I'm just narrowing it down. Minus 12x plus 3x is minus 9x. And then plus 9 minus 5 is plus 4 equals 0. Okay, so we've got this quadratic, as promised. Um, and there are several ways we can try and solve this. Um, at this point, I would just suggest uh, using the quadratic formula, which is given to you at the front of the paper. Um, so if we do that, then A is equal to 5 b is equal to negative 9 and c is equal to 4 and 
when you do that you get the answers of uh let me just work it out for okay so you get x equals one and x equals four over five now we're expecting to get two answers here and we're not done yet because we need to find the corresponding y's okay now just thinking about before I find the y's, uh, just thinking about um, what's actually going on here, we're actually finding out where these two graphs cross. Now, you're not expected to know what this top top uh, graph looks like, but but it's going to be a curve. I can I can tell you that for nothing, and the bottom one's a straight line, and the straight line is going to cross the curve twice okay that is why we are um that is why we're going to get two coordinates basically so okay so to find the corresponding y coordinates we just substitute our x coordinates and uh, you can substitute it into either one but you'd be a bit silly to substitute it into the top one so we're going to substitute it into the bottom one so if we substitute one first of all into 2x minus 3 well we get minus 1 y equals minus 1 and if we substitute 4 over 5 into 2x minus 3, we get, uh, just typing in my calculator, we get negative 7 over 5. Negative 7 over 5. And those are our answers. Um, and these are our two coordinates here. And that is where these two lines intersect each other. Okay, so we're completing the square here. Um, so it says express 7 plus 12x minus 3x squared in the form a plus b in brackets x plus c squared, where a, b, c are integers also known as whole numbers. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to rewrite this because I like having the x squared at the front. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it, I'm just used to seeing it that way. Now... I'm going to leave this plus 7 at the end, right until the very end, okay? And I am going to take a factor of negative 3 out the front of the remainder, so I'm left with x squared there. Now, if I take a negative 3, a factor of negative 3 out of 12, I get negative 4x, okay? So I've basically just factorized those first two terms, and now I'm going to complete the square on the square brackets, so you do that by doing x, and then you've got to half that number. So it's x minus 2. That's going to be squared. And now I'm subtracting the square of the number inside the bracket. So that's subtract 2 squared. And then I'm closing my square bracket. And that plus 7 is still on the end there. Uh, I'm just going to tidy up. A little bit first before I expand the square bracket. So minus 2, subtract 2 squared is subtract 4 plus 7. I'm now going to expand the square bracket. So I'm getting minus 3 times the bracket squared minus 3 uh, times by minus 4 is plus 12 plus 7 at the end. So just putting in the form they want. So they want the number at the front. So that's 19 minus 3 times by x minus 2 squared. And that is our answer. So a in this question is 19, b is negative 3, and c is negative 2. Okay, c is the curve uh, with the equation y equals uh, 7 plus 12x minus 3x squared, same as before. The point a is the maximum point on uh, C. So use your part answer to part A uh, to write down the coordinates of A. So we can write Y equals 19 minus 3 X minus 2 squared. Okay, now this is a negative quadratic. This is just a bit of extra learning. You don't actually need to know this to be able to solve this. It's a negative quadratic. It's going to go through... Um, why is it going to go through? Where's 
So when x is 0, it's going to go through positive 7 here. Uh, when x is 0, uh, it's going to look something like this. It, something around there. Something that looks slightly similar to that. Um, now, the way we find, you can actually, the reason it's one mark is because we can actually look at this. Um, and I can tell you now it's 2, 19. Um, and we can actually look at this and just work it out. Now, the reason why this is the maximum is because when this part of the equation here, this part here, because it's squared, um, that that part can never be negative. That part can never be negative because you're squaring it. Because if you've got, let's say, that bracket equaled negative 5, when I square it, it becomes 25. So... The smallest this part of the equation can be is zero. Okay, so let's say that is zero. Okay, that's when I'm going to get my biggest value, my maximum value. So when that is zero, my y coordinate is 19, which is why that part is 19. So when that bracket equals zero, the maximum I can get is 19. So now I need to think. What does x need to be to make that bracket 0? And the answer is 2 minus 2 is 0. So I need x to be 2, which is why it is 2 here. Okay. Now, I had a look at this question before I started recording. Uh, and I'm not going to beat around the bush. It, it's, it's a long question. Um, and in reality, it's a long question, but it's not necessarily a difficult question. So don't let it put you off that there's loads of information here. Um, ultimately, what we're doing is Sokotoa and Pythagoras. Okay, And we just need to absorb the rest of the information. So we've basically got a cuboid here uh, and an equilateral triangle prism. Okay. Uh, now, I'm just going to label this x, uh, which means this is x, which means this is x, which means this is x, which means this is x. Because it's an equilateral triangle, I'm just going to move that x because I know it's going to get in the way later. Um, now, it says here that uh, EF is 2 times AE. Now, if AE is X, as we've labelled it, then EF is 2X. Okay, I'm just going to put an extra X here to make sure I don't miss anything out. Now, MAJ, now I'm going to try and draw this triangle in here. So I'm drawing a line between A and M, a line between J and M, and a line between A and j. So we've got that triangle there. I'm actually going to draw it out here as well. And it's a right angle triangle because it's perpendicular. So that's j, that's m, and that's a. Now, if this is y degrees, uh, now I can, I can work some stuff out. And this is basically the triangle that I'm trying to solve here. And I want to find jm. And I want to find AM in terms of X. Okay, now I want to find those two things. And then I can find T. Okay, because T is just the tan of that angle, uh, which we'll come on to in a minute. Okay, so let's go about solving this, uh, trying to find JM and trying to find AM. So let's start by finding AM. Okay, so AM, I can actually use, and let me use a different color here. I can actually use this triangle here. So that if that's the midpoint, I can use that triangle there. So if I pull that triangle out, so that's 90 degrees. Let's call that M. Let's call that A. And we can call this point, let's just any point. Let's call it what's well, not been used, W. So let's call this point W. Now that point W is halfway between A and E. It's the midpoint. So that's a half X. Uh, 
W to M is 2x because it's parallel to EF and we're trying to find AM and we can do that using Pythagoras so a half x oh hang on that's not squared I jumped the gun there a half x squared plus 2x squared is equal to AM squared okay so just scrolling down so that's going to give me a quarter x squared plus 4x squared is equal to am squared. Now a half x squared plus, uh, sorry, a quarter x squared uh, plus 4x squared is uh, 17 over 4x squared. That's am squared. So if I want am, I'm going to square root that, which is is uh, root 17 over 2x okay so we found am so let's go back up here and write that in and i'm going to write it in red so it's root 17 over 2x okay so that is am so now we're trying to find jm now i know um let's just call this part n just for reference now I know already that this part is x because it's parallel to kf and and this is the trick of this question really let me redraw that because I've actually overextended it because this is an equilateral triangle that angle there is 60 degrees now if I just take this over here and let's write in green um, if I take out the triangle j n k and that's 60 degrees that's x that's a half x um i can find j n um now and then add x to it to find j m now you can use pythagoras or you can use sokotoa um i'm probably just going to use pythagoras so j n squared plus a half x squared let me put that in brackets let's not make any mistakes here equals x squared okay so that's just Pythagoras so j n squared is equal to x squared minus a quarter x squared uh, it's a quarter now because I've just squared the half so then if I put that in the calculator one minus a quarter uh, you get a 3 over 4 x squared equals j n squared so j n is the square root of that um, which is root 3 over 2 um, x so I need to add so just going down so that means going back to black just to not confuse things so j m which is what I want is equal to j n plus x looking at the diagram if I've got j n here and I want j m I've just got to add the x from n to m so j m is going to equal to root 3 over 2 x plus x so if I do root 3 over 2 plus 1 I get 2 plus root 3 over 2 x so jm is equal to that so let's put that on our original triangle um, and you get 2 plus root 3 over 2x now this is where we really get into um, the question here so tan y equals t so they, they want us to find t here now tan y is just the opposite over adjacent right so using our Sokotoa so let's actually write that tan y is equal to opposite over adjacent and it says here that tan y is equal to t so let's just call it t is equal to opposite over adjacent now we've just worked out what the opposite and the adjacent are so this is actually 2 plus root 3 over 2 x over and this is going to look messy root 17 over 2 
x now we're almost there now first of all these x's cancel and that's why we put it there in the first place now if you can type it into the calculator that's great but I can also times top and bottom by 2 which means the halves cancel which means I get 2 plus root 3 over root 17 um, now if you type that in your calculator it will actually simplify it for you and we're not gaining any marks here to try and rationalize this denominator that's not that's not where the marks are coming from um, but you've got to be careful here because they want it in a certain form and that and they've put it in this form so you can't just type in the calculator but if you type in 2 plus root 3 over root 17 into the calculator it will rationalize the denominator for you automatically uh, so we get 17 on the bottom and we get root 51 plus 2 root 17 now we're almost there we found p but actually I need to convert this 2 root 17 into just a, a standard square root. So I can actually write, uh, I'm just going to go over here in a different color just to make it clear. So I can write 2 root 17 as root 4 times root 17 because the square root of 4 is 2. And then I can combine the square root as 4 times 17. Uh, and then if I write that down, write that out, that is root 68. So instead of writing 2 root 17 over here, uh, you can write uh, root 68. So root 51 plus root 60 plus root 68 over 17. And that is our answer there. Like I said, it's a long question. Once you decide to label a side x, you realize a lot of stuff is related to x. In fact, every side is related to x. And then we can find everything we need to find out. It's a long question. It's worth five marks. Um, and you don't have to write it on the answer line. But if you were, it would be root 51 plus root 68 over 17. Okay, that's what your answer would be. Vector's question. Okay, now these questions, let me just read it out to you. The diagram shows triangle OAB. Uh, OA is vector 8A, uh, and then OB is vector 6B. Now, point M uh, is OM and MB such that it's in the ratio of 1 to 2. N is the midpoint of AB, and P is the point of intersection between ON and AM. And they want us to find OP as a simplified expression in terms of A and B. Okay, now these uh, are tricky tricky questions as well. This is a tricky vector question, uh, but it's definitely achievable. Now, first and foremost, I'm just going to write draw in my vectors. So if OM and MB are in the ratio of 1 to 2, that means this is 1 third and this is 2 thirds. Uh, of OB. Now I'm just going to move this out of the way because I don't want them getting in, in the way. Um, but one third and two thirds. Now if OB is 6B, that means OM is 2B because that is a third uh, of 6B. So that means the remainder, the remainder is 4B. So from O to M is 2B and M to B is 4B. And then simply OA is 8A as a vector. Okay, now the aim of the game here is try and find OP two different ways. Uh, and then we're going to solve it simultaneously and equate um, coefficients. So let's find uh, OP. And I'm going to just highlight the root here. Let's find it this way. Okay, and you think that's a pretty long way, long way around, um, but that's okay. Uh, it doesn't really matter which route you take, uh, as long as you get there in the end. So to go from O, and let's actually just start here for finding um, O to N. So O to N is equal to eight A, and then I need to plus half because it's the midpoint A to B. Okay, so I need to plus half A to B. Well, AB, 
and I'm gonna go around the back. So it's gonna be minus eight A, that takes us to O, and then plus six B, that takes us, I should put in all my dashes to let you know it's vectors, um, and that takes us to B. Now, if I'm halving that, then O N is equal to eight A plus a half, and then minus eight A, plus 6b. Okay, I'm just going to expand that, tidy it up. So 8a minus 4a plus 3b is on. So again, still tidying up 4a plus 3b. That's on. Okay, so now we found o to n. Uh, what we actually need to know here, uh, let me just rub this out. Um, we know that O to P is a scalar um, of O to N. So we can find O to P by timesing it by some scalar. Uh, let's call it K, like such. Okay, so we found O P one way. Now we can actually find it another way. Let's find it, uh, get my highlighter, this way. Okay, um, let me do it in a different color. Let me do it in blue. So we know uh, OM is equal to 2B. So now I need to find M to P. That's what I'm trying to find. Well, we can find M to A, and that's minus 2B plus 8A. Okay. So that's how we get from, and again, same as OP to ON, MP to MA, you can just times it by a scalar number. Um, so actually, O to P would be 2B, and then plus, and then we need a different letter. Um, well, we can use a Greek letter or an English letter, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use mu, that's the one they tend to use. Um, and then we're timesing it by MA, which we've worked out here, uh, like such. Okay, um, now I'm going to just write these two things next to each other on the page below. So the blue one was 2B plus mu minus 2b plus 8a and then the black one I'm just going to give myself plenty of room so it's nice and clear is equal to k times 4a plus 3b okay now actually I'm going to expand these brackets and make everything in terms of a and b so let's just do it on the blue one first um, so OP is equal to 2B plus, uh, I'm actually going to do the, oh no, let's, let's do, let's do the B's first, minus 2 mu B, and then plus 8 mu A, and then I can actually factorize a B out here, so I get 2 minus 2 mu B plus 8 mu A. Okay, so that's my first equation. Now doing it on the black equation, I'm going to substitute, uh, I'm going to expand out those brackets. So I get 4ka plus 3kb. Now, these two things have to be equal. They have to be, because they're both OP. So we can actually equate coefficients here. Uh, and I'm actually just going to rewrite this bottom blue one. So it's A first. Um, just so it's crystal clear. So that's 8 mu A plus 2 minus 2 mu B. Okay, so now that it's lined up, hopefully it's really, really clear um, that we can equate these coefficients. So we can write 8 mu is equal to 4K. So that's equating the A coefficients. And 2 minus 2 mu is equal to 3k. Now we've got two equations here 
and we're basically we just need to find k uh, and then we can find op which is the aim of the game here so if we rewrite this equation in terms of mu then we get a half let me then we get uh, mu equals a half k so then I'm going to substitute that into the second one so I get two times a half k equals 3k which gives us 2 minus k equals 3k 2 equals 4k k equals a half now if I substitute k into there I get op equals a half 4a plus 3b now expanding that bracket 2a plus 3 over 2b and that is what op is and that is our answer so op is 2a plus 3 over 2b okay so we've got a function here uh, so this is uh, graph transformations uh, okay, so the diagram shows a sketch of the curve with the equation y equals fx. Um, so we've got a maximum point there. There is only one maximum point on the curve. The coordinates of this maximum point are 5, 7, as shown in the diagram. Write down the coordinates of the maximum point on the curve with the equation, and then we've got two parts of the equation. So here, we just need to know our transformation rules. Um, I'm actually going to do part two first because it's easier. Um, let me change back to the color black. Okay, so when we've got this plus three, that's annoying. When I've got this plus three here, um, that means I'm gonna move everything up by three. I'm gonna move everything up by three. So the graph would look something like that. Um, so if I move this maximum point up three, well, the X coordinate is still gonna be five. So the x coordinate is still going to be 5, and the y coordinate is going to move up by 3, so it's 5, 10. Okay, so that's the, that's the second part. Um, obviously, you don't need to do the second part first, but I decided to. Now, when you get this plus 9, and it's inside the bracket, that means it's going to move left 9. Okay, it's left 9. So you do the opposite when it's inside the bracket. So it's moving left 9. So let me get rid of these sketches here. Uh, so now if I move this point left 9, okay, the y coordinate is still going to be 7. The y coordinate is still going to be 7. Now, if I take away 9 from 5, I get negative 4. Now, it's two marks, and ultimately, you just need to learn the rules of uh, your graph transformations. And hopefully, this is a really straightforward question once you've known, uh, once you know those. Okay, question 24. We're nearly, nearly at the end now. Um, if you made it this far, please like and subscribe. It just helps. Uh, share it with your friends. Um, and I'll be doing all the videos on here, so it'll all be in one place. Uh, and that would really help me out. Okay, question 24. The curve C has the equation y equals ax cubed plus bx squared minus 12x plus 6, where a and b are constants. The point A, uh, with the coordinates 2 minus 6, lies on the curve C. The gradient of the curve at A is 16. Find the y coordinate of the point on the curve whose x coordinate is three okay so that sounds quite confusing that like, what they actually want here this is this is not straightforward but actually what we need to do is find a and b so we actually need to find a and b that's our primary kind of aim here and then we can focus on what they mean by that by that line uh, in a minute so we need to find a and b and that ultimately again as with much of the gcc you're going to need to find a simultaneous equation and solve it that way because we've got two unknowns okay so the first simultaneous equation is we've got this coordinate that lies on the curve 
So I'm going to substitute those two points in straight away. So y is minus 6. And then I'm going to get 2 cubed times a, 2 squared times b, minus 12 times 2 plus 6. Now I'm just going to tidy that all up. So I get minus 6 equals 8a plus 4b minus 24 plus 6. Okay, now just um, to make sure uh, it's tidy and everything, I'm going to collate all the numbers. So, and minus 6. So minus 6 plus 18. So I get 12 equals 8a plus 4b. And again, you can actually go further than that and divide everything by 4. So I get 3 equals 2a plus b. So that's my first kind of equation found okay so that's really good that's really helpful um, now the next bit of information I'm given is a gradient of the curve at a is 16 so the gradient that should instantly be telling us that we need to differentiate here um, so I need to differentiate dy dx so when I do that I get 3a um, x squared so I've brought the power down and I've subtracted one from the power and then I'm going to get 2b x minus 12 so I've differentiated there um, now it says the gradient of the curve at a is 16 so that means dy dx is equal to 16 uh, when I substitute 2 into x so I get 3a times 2 squared plus 2b times 2 minus 12. So again, just tidying this up. Uh, that's 4, that's 12a minus 4b, sorry, plus 4b minus 12. Add the 12 onto the other side. That's 28 equals 12a plus 4b. And again, uh, I can divide everything by 4. Um, and that will give me 7 equals 3a plus b. So let me just get rid of this line. So I now need to solve simultaneously. How you do it doesn't really matter at this stage of the paper. But let's write 7, uh, 3a plus b. And then on the bottom, 3 equals 2a plus b. I'm going to subtract those two things, so I get a equals 4, and then substituting it back in, uh, I'm going to get b equals minus 5. Okay, we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet, but what we can do is rewrite that original equation and write in what we found for a and b. So we've got 4x cubed minus 5 x squared minus 12 x plus 6 okay so we've got our equation we found a and b um, and now what we actually need to do is what they say here find the y coordinate of the point on the curve whose x coordinate is 3 that's a really fancy way of saying substitute 3 into x Okay, so we're going to get y equals 4 times, it was 3, wasn't it yet? 4 times 3 cubed minus 5 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 6. You type that in the calculator and make sure you're super careful. We don't want to be making any mistakes here. Come all this way. Squared minus 12 times 3 plus 6. Okay. 33 is what I get. Okay, so knowing that the gradient means to differentiate uh, and substitute in 2 is, is a key point in there. And there we are, guys. We're at the end of the paper. Uh, hopefully, you found that useful. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment down at the bottom. I'm happy to answer any comments, uh, any questions in the comments section. Uh, and please like and subscribe. Uh, this is Dr. James Maths. Uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye.